Hey everyone, welcome to another Paulson University Small Bite. On this episode, we're going to learn how to improve our body language reading skills in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. We don't bark and dogs can't talk, but man's best friend has evolved after so many years of domestication and they've not only learned how to read our body language, but they also communicate with us using theirs. The problem is, much of the time we aren't paying attention. Once you train your brain to identify the nonverbal cues, body language is a highly effective and reliable method of communication between us and dogs. The topic of canine body language is extensive, so for this episode, let's just focus on something often overlooked but critical to the safety of everyone involved, stress indicators. Dogs use our body language to decipher our emotions and intentions. This is why many fearful dogs have a poor reaction to people wearing brimmed hats or hoods. When we obscure our facial features, we become harder to read and the dog is forced to make assumptions of our intentions with limited information. In this way, though, we're very similar. As humans, we process a dog's emotions and intentions in the same way. This is exactly why dogs with cropped ears and tails tend to appear more intimidating to some people. Two of the most reliable methods of communication are now gone. If you happen to have a dog nearby, let's observe them for a moment. Look at their posture. Are they relaxed or alert? How about their head? Are their features soft or are they perked up? Are their ears down and relaxed, up high, or maybe pinned back? On to the mouth. Are they panting? If they are, is their tongue in or out? Yeah, that matters. Are they licking their lips or yawning? Can you see their teeth? How about their eyes? Are the whites of their eyes forming crescent moons? Are their brows relaxed or furrowed? And down to the tail, is it wagging? How fast? Is it high and proud, low and curious, tucked and fearful, or wispy and playful? Lastly, check between their shoulder blades at the base of their neck. Are their hackles up or down? We'll touch more on that later. There are tons of nonverbal cues to assess and then add together to determine what the dog is thinking. This is a skill that is built upon after countless meaningful encounters with dogs on every end of the spectrum, and it's a perishable skill too. It's never perfect, and it's always improving. Learning to identify a stressed dog can help you avoid confrontation or injury. Stress is especially tricky to spot as it takes the form of displacement behaviors, which distract you from their body language. Imagine a stressed dog and apply these cues to their appearance. Excessive panting or closed mouth with shallow breathing, Dilated eyes, tucked or low tail, whale or crescent moon eyes, ears pinned back or sideways, tense facial muscles, one paw raised, drooling, and some may tighten the skin at the base of their neck and hindquarters, causing the hair to stand tall. This is referred to as raised hackles or piloerection. Dogs may display one or some of these cues. The more cues they display, the more likely they're stressed. Back to those displacement behaviors. Displacement behaviors are otherwise normal behaviors that are being displayed out of context. The dog usually wants to do something but is resisting the urge to do it, either fight, flight, freeze, or faint. We partake in displacement behaviors as well, like scratching our head while thinking or chewing our fingernails when stressed. These are behaviors we choose to engage in when faced with conflict. The displacement behaviors seen most often in dogs are yawning when they aren't tired, licking their lips when they haven't been offered food, and shaking their body when they aren't wet. This is known as a shake-off. Other displacement behaviors include self-grooming, scratching or biting itself, or sniffing at the ground. Remember, what makes them displacement behaviors is that the situation does not call for it. So if they're self-grooming and it's just not the time to self-groom, it's probably a displacement behavior. The most important thing to do when assessing a stressed dog's body language is to be aware of the environment. Ask yourself, is there a reason for this dog to be stressed? Are they out of their comfort zone and somewhere scary like a dog park or a restaurant? Are there strange people or dogs trying to interact with them? Or is there something making their comfort zone scary, like construction, loud yelling? If the situation fits the cues, you can confidently assume that the dog is stressed and needs to be left alone or removed from the situation. And don't forget, some dogs may only show one cue, or some dogs, even unbeknownst to their current owners, have been trained prior to suppress their body language. So if your gut says don't lean in to give them a pet, listen to it. That's all I have for this small bite. This is going to be a new segment where we touch on little things with body language, this one obviously being canine stress indicators. 
And the idea is to better understand dogs and better read dogs. We're going to touch on aggression. We're going to touch on fear. All these things so that everybody could learn to read their dogs better. And before I close this one out, a few people have been reaching out to us asking how they can support the show because they noticed that we don't do advertisements on our shows. We were very flattered, so we set up a buy me a coffee page. So buymeacoffee.com forward slash possum, and you can go on there and just buy us a coffee. I think one coffee on here is $4, and yes, we are very obsessed with coffee. I do a lot of my work late at night, so we run on coffee in this household. So if you're really enjoying the show, and you're, you're enjoying the content that we're putting out twice a week and then the fun facts on our Instagram at Possum University, then head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash possum and buy us a coffee. That would be amazing. So that's all I have for this week. We'll be talking to you on Wednesday, Jamie and I. And uh, until then, class dismissed.